grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we, we have, have sinned against you and against, against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through, through negligence, through, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We, we are, are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive, forgive us, us all of his past, and grant that we may serve you in unity of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our collect and reading on the third Sunday after Epiphany. So in these moments we offer our thoughts and our prayers to God for ourselves and for those who we love.
Almighty Father, whose Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, is the light of the world. May your people, illumined by your word and sacrament, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth, for he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of Nehemiah. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it, facing the square before the water gate, from early morning until midday, in the presence of men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. For well, he was standing above all the people. When he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that people understood the reading. And Nehemiah was the governor, and Ezra, priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the word of the law. And he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This is the word of the Lord.
The epistle is taken from the first letter of Apostle Paul to the people of Corinth. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one many, but of many. <coughs> if the foot would say, <clears throat> because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, <clears throat> yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honourable, we clothe with greater honour. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body giving the greater honour to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members <clears throat> may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>
Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee. And a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. Amen. Please sit down. What's the point in coming to church or joining on Zoom? Seriously, why do you come? It's okay, I'm not trying to put you off. In fact, you're all really welcome here. But I am a bit curious. And for many of us, there can be more than one reason why we are here. I hope that together this morning, we can gain some insight and purpose for our services. Our readings all refer to gatherings of God's people. Nehemiah is the last of the Old Testament historical books, and it's well worth reading if you are not familiar with it. It's only 13 chapters long. Nehemiah was a layman with a responsible secular job in the Persian government, a practical man and an organiser who liked to get things done. And importantly, he was a man of faith. He was concerned to hear that the walls of Jerusalem had come down and he returned from exile in Persia to oversee the rebuilding of the walls and to encourage the people to renew their faith. This was a huge task and he knew it was achievable only if everyone was involved and were each given a specific part to play. The wall was in fact completed in only 52 days, despite much opposition. 
and even their enemies in the surrounding nations realised the work had been done with the help of God. However, it wasn't just broken walls that needed rebuilding, but broken lives. Nehemiah gathered the people together to hear Ezra, the priest and scribe, read God's law as found in the first five books of our Old Testament. Everyone gathered around the word of God and Ezra helped them to understand it by interpreting some of the passages. The people were dismayed to realise how much they had moved away from God's ways. But Ezra encouraged them not to dwell on the negatives, but to be joyful that they would find strength in the Lord. God would renew their spirit individually and corporately. Repentance would lead to healing. The early church based in Corinth was made up of an eclectic mix of characters from all cultures and backgrounds, Romans, Greeks, Jews, slaves and free. Their church gatherings exhibited enthusiasm and evidence of spirituality but St Paul voiced several concerns in his letter to them. 1 Corinthians 12 is a chapter on the use of spiritual gifts and ministries. And it is sandwiched between chapter 11, which is about the Eucharist and sharing in the body of Christ in Holy Communion and chapter 13, which is about love for one another. It is in this context that Paul wrote to them about recognising that everyone in the body was needed. Everyone had their own part to play when they met together and that all roles within the church should be honoured. God appoints a ministry or way of serving to each one, whether it is a speaking or teaching role, praying for the sick, helping others, leading a group, or encouraging someone with a special word just for them. In his letters to other churches, Paul refers to the gifts of administration, of service, of giving generously, and of showing mercy. All are equally important in building the church. We all need to drink of the one spirit and know we are loved and part of the body of Christ. In our Gospel reading, Jesus had walked back from the wedding at Cana, where the news was spreading that he had turned water into wine. And he began his teaching ministry in the Galilean synagogues. At his hometown of Nazareth, he went to the local synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom or habit he brought the word of God to that gathering and explained it to them. In fact, he told them that he himself was the fulfillment of the scripture he read. Jesus is the good news. God's spirit can set us free, can heal us, and deliver us from our personal prisons. Jesus gave sight to the blind. 
and today he can heal our spiritual blindness. Like John Newton, the former slave trader, we can say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. God wants the church to be a community of people who have been made whole and who are able to reach out to those around us who are broken and in need of healing. The task is big, but God can give us strength. So then, to return to my original question, what is the point in coming to church or joining with the church on Zoom? May I conclude with the following suggestions. We gather together to hear God's word to us and hopefully to have it explained to us as I'm trying to do today. Like the psalmist, we recognize that commandments of the Lord is pure and gives light to our eyes. We meet together because it is our habit. Just like Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, we all need good habits or we will be prone to slipping into bad ones. We gather to celebrate being one body as we share in the body of Christ in the Eucharist. We recognize that we all have a part to play in the body. Everyone has a bit of the wall to build using the gifts that God has given us. We are all valued and needed and what we have to offer is by no means inferior to what anyone else does. We can support one another by prayer and by words and songs of encouragement. We acknowledge our failings when we say the confession together. And we know that in our national life and world today, there is much evidence of failure and moral decay. We can get dispirited that the church seems to be in decline. But hey, God is in the rebuilding business. Jesus sets us free from the secular spirit of this age when we drink freely from the water of life. Jesus can make the church fit to be his bride and worthy of his name. Let this day, today, be holy to the Lord your God and be encouraged for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Thank you, Mary, for reminding us why we do gather together. We are called of God. And we all have a part to play in the ministry and the body of Christ in this place. So we stand together to say the creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from, from God, God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please kneel or sit for prayer. I'm sorry if this appears like the Mary Tynan show this morning. <laughs> it's just the way the rotors fell. As we share a common faith and hope, let us pray trustingly to God who made us and sustains us. Almighty God, we thank you that you made each of us as individuals with our own unique gifts and abilities, and we recognize and value our differences. But we need each other and are held together by our common life in Christ, united as one throughout the world, building your church. In this week of prayer for Christian unity, we ask you to encourage and inspire all Christians in all areas of ministry in the church. We pray for those who lead us in this parish. Help us to discern how together our voice can be heard in our local community, to be sensitive to the needs of others, to meet them where they are and to be a good neighbour. Show us how we can best serve families and young children, those who are without work or who are unhappy in their work, those who are struggling to make ends meet, the elderly, the housebound, and those seeking meaning in their lives. In a moment of quiet, Please pray for someone in your street or workplace who is on your mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign Lord, we thank you that we are free to worship you without fear. We pray for our fellow Christians throughout your world thinking particularly for all those for whom worshipping will lead them into dangers and difficulties. And especially we pray for the Christians in Afghanistan. Be near them and give them courage and strength. We long for the day when all will be free to proclaim your name in all corners of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
God of mercy, this week we will remember Holocaust Memorial Day. Commemorating when Auschwitz was liberated in 1945. For so many, there was no liberty. Today, many feel the world to be a cruel and hopeless place. But we know your grace and forgiveness reign supreme. We pray for all people who live in dark places, the oppressed and exploited, for those denied freedom and dignity by those in authority, for those under threat of war or violence, for those forced to leave their homeland, for those men and women who live lives of quiet desperation at the hands of the powerful. In a moment of quiet, please pray for a country or situation on your mind at this time. For these and all who suffer, we ask that you will guide those in authority to use their power wisely, to break down barriers and unite people and communities together to give hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, this world is a place of richness and delight for many, but not for all. Greed and minimal concern for your wonderful creation has brought about prosperity for some and poverty for others. Help us never to forget that we are guardians of the many treasures which we possess. We hold them in trust for you and for our children and our children's children. Help us once again to commit ourselves to carrying out these responsibilities faithfully and well. Seeking ways to deal with climate change, animal extinction, pollution and destruction of habitats. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, we pray for those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. We pray especially for all who are frightened because they are ill or in pain, for those awaiting a diagnosis or treatment. Help them to have confidence in those with medical knowledge and who care for the sick. We pray too for those in despair and feel engulfed by their turmoil. Provide them with a support system in their life to let them know they are important, that they matter and that they are not alone. In a moment of quiet, please pray for someone who is on your mind at this time. Lord, we ask that you will surround them all with your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Father, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, whether recently or marking an anniversary, and for those who will attend funerals this week. In a moment of quiet, please pray for someone who is grieving at this time. Give to them the strong comfort which no one else can give and let them know the comforting power of the resurrection of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we go out into the world this week, we ask, Lord, that you would help us to grow in Christian unity, each playing our part to build your kingdom here on earth, to learn to love each other more, so that we might be a closer family for your sake. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our risen Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
we stand for the peace. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. And we remain standing as we sing our offertory hymn, Lord of the Boundless Curves of Space. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed are you, Lord The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, 
For at this time we celebrate your glory, made present in our midst. With the coming of the Magi, the King of the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding of feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing your joyful hymn of praise. the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He gave you thanks. Gave it to them and saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. And so far the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice, made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting as worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon your people, and in, gather into one into your kingdom all who share this one bread and this one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, St. Catherine, St. Peter, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. confidence the prayer our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy will kingdom, be done, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead and us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be forgiven. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
we say a prayer for communion in separation with those who are watching on Zoom today. Lord Jesus Christ, life giver and good physician, hear you meet me in our need, in a world marred by corruption and marred by death. Draw me into true life by your selfless sacrifice. Help me to live for others and not myself. May I, who cannot now receive you sacramentally, embrace you more fully in my heart, mind, and soul. Help me unite myself to you in spirit, so that I may be drawn closer to those from whom I am isolated in the body. Through sharing your life, giving up in death for us all, may we grow together in love into a richer and a more profound communion of life. Amen. Almighty Father, whose Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, may your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth, for he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. So just a few notices today. Please do uh, take note of uh, notices on your uh, uh, email, mail chimp as it is called. Uh, just services coming up. We've got a candle mass service next Wednesday evening with lunch, uh, not lunch, nibbles afterwards. Uh, and drinks, and uh, the Bishop of Leicester shall be here. It's the formation of a new Anglican uh, Catholic Society in the Diocese of Leicester. So the inaugural event is here next Wednesday, the 2nd of February. So please do let me know. Many people have just for catering purposes, so that uh, our former rector can uh, go to the vaults and open his bank account because he's proposed to pay for the evening. So that's really good, isn't it? So I'm winding up, up a little bit as well. But it'd be lovely to see the former rector David Jennings, the bishop, and the archdeacon may be here as well. So there'll be uh, quite a group of clergy and lay people, the choir, the guild of servers. So it's a little bit of a jamboree, really, as we launch and try to formulate our strategy going forward uh, as we as the days of COVID begin to relax a little bit and we, try, we live with it rather than being fearful of it. I think that's one of the things that we're trying to do as well. Also, the Burns Night is, uh, well, that's going really well. Christine's here today. Don't so just stand up two minutes, Christine, uh, and she'll take all your money off you for your tickets. I think there are at least 70 tickets gone already, so that's a really good response. Uh, and we've got lots of things lined up for you on that night as well. Uh, and I think I'm going to leave it at that. So, 100 Club. 100 Club. Are you going to tell me who? No, oh, no. 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 Yes. No. Oh, please do. If you haven't got a number for the 100 Club, which is a church's lottery type thing, uh, it, it is a great way to fundraise for the church. It costs £12 per year per ticket and you have got the chance of winning up to £80 each month. Plus there's a Christmas double bonus uh, of about £200 or something like that. So please, please do see Martin in the red dress at the back. He'll, uh, he'll help you with that. And uh, please stay behind for coffee afterwards. I said something that tickled his fancy, I think. So shall we stand and we'll have a dismissal and the final hymn. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory. Gladden your hearts. Well, he has already done that, hasn't he? With the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you always. Amen. In the name of Christ. Amen.
so are you. Thanks be to God. I just realised that everyone was gone. <laughs> Just obviously never put it on. I think we're faffing around with frozen. <laughs>